Let's consider internal resistance to mass transport. As we discussed previously, many solid catalysts contain pores. In these systems, as depicted here, reactants must diffuse through the pores to reach active sites and undergo reaction, and products must diffuse out once formed. When these transport processes are not sufficiently rapid, they can impact the overall rate of the catalytic process. Here we'll develop an expression for the concentration profile in a porous spherical particle. But first, let's consider the diffusion coefficient we'll be using in developing these equations. Outside of the particle, the diffusivity of reactants or products is dictated by molecule-molecule collisions. In large enough pores, this is also the case. So here, the diffusivity of the gas phase molecules is essentially just that of the molecules in a free gas phase, and it has no dependence on the pore size. So if we plot here the diffusion coefficient of our reactant A versus pore radius, in this regime we'll call the molecular diffusion regime, will have no dependence of the diffusion coefficient on pore radius, it will just be equal to that in the bulk gas phase. At smaller pore sizes, molecules collide with the walls of the pore more often than they do with other molecules. We call this regime Newton diffusion. In this regime, reducing pore size will lead to more collisions with the walls and therefore a reduction in the diffusion coefficient. Finally, if the pores are reduced more, the diffusion coefficient drops dramatically. In this range, the molecules must essentially move one by one single file through the pores, and at small enough sizes, the molecules are blocked from entering the pores, and the diffusion coefficient drops to zero. This is depicted by this purple molecule trying to move through the pore here. And we'll call this regime configurational diffusion. In addition to the diffusion coefficient changing with pore size, we'll also need to account for the fact that not all of the particle is available for diffusion so the surface of the particle is not all pores. We also need to account for the fact that the paths are not straight, so these pores are not perfect cylinders. A convenient way to capture this effect is to use what's called an effective diffusivity, which will give the notation d sub e. This effective diffusivity accounts for these effects and allows us to treat diffusion as if the whole particle area was available for diffusion. So let's consider our spherical particle and perform a shell balance for a molecule A that undergoes a first order reaction, A goes to B. So within this differential shell of thickness delta R, we can write a mole balance on A. So we can say that the rate of A entering this shell by diffusion minus the rate of A leaving the shell by diffusion plus the rate of generation of A within that shell by reaction is equal to zero at steady state. So we can express each one of these terms mathematically. So each one of the diffusion terms will just be a flux, which we call n sub a times the surface area available for diffusion, so that'll be 4 pi r squared, and this will be evaluated so the flux coming into the shell will be at a position r minus the same term at a position r plus delta r, so plus the rate of generation of a, which will be minus k c a times the volume available for reaction, so this will be volume of this control element is four pi r squared delta r, and this is all equal to zero. So our four pi here will cancel, our r will not since it's evaluated at different positions, so we can divide our whole expression through by delta r and take the limit as delta r goes to zero, so as this shell becomes infinitesimally thin, and this leaves us with the following differential equation. So our flux term here, n sub a, can be expressed using Fick's law, so we can write that the flux of A by diffusion is gonna be minus uh, diffusion coefficient of A. So here this is gonna be the effective diffusivity, which again takes into account that the surface area of the entire sphere is not available for diffusion and that the pores are not straight, times dCA dr. So introducing this into our differential equation, we can write an expression that looks like this. So we can simplify this derivative on the left-hand side. And then dividing through by r squared, we can arrive at our final differential equation. So this will be that the effective diffusivity squared times the second derivative of concentration of A with respect to position r plus 2 over r dca dr minus kca equals 0. So this differential equation can be non-dimensionalized using the following parameters. So we can define psi as the concentration of A at any position r divided by the concentration of A at the surface. And we can have a similar non-dimensional variable for position here. So we can define omega 
as the position r divided by the radius of the particle. This gives us a differential equation that looks like this. So d squared psi d omega squared, second derivative of our non-dimensional concentration over our non-dimensional position, plus two over omega d psi d omega minus the radius of the particle squared times the rate constant k divided by the effective diffusivity squared times psi equals zero. So this term here is one of special significance. So this will be the Thiele modulus squared. And so we'll talk about the physical significance of this term shortly. So we can re-express our differential equation using the Thiele modulus. And this differential equation can be solved using the appropriate boundary conditions. So here our boundary conditions are that psi equals one when omega equals one. And this just means that the concentration of A is equal to the surface concentration when we are at the surface of the particle. Our other boundary condition is that d psi d omega is equal to zero at omega equals zero, which just means that the flux must cancel at the center of the sphere. So the solution to this differential equation for psi, which again is equal to our concentration at any point in our particle divided by the surface concentration, so this is the concentration profile we were looking for, is equal to the hyperbolic sine of our Thiele modulus times omega divided by omega times the hyperbolic sine of the Thiele modulus. So it's useful to plot the concentration profiles through the pellet at different values of the Thiele modulus to see its physical significance. So here it's clear that the Thiele modulus indicates which process is rate limiting. When the Thiele modulus is low, so in this top trace, the diffusion is fast relative to reaction and consequently the concentration through the particle can be maintained very close to the surface concentration. In contrast, at high Thiele modulus, diffusion through the pores is insufficiently rapid to keep A from being depleted inside the particle. So we'll discuss the Thiele modulus in more detail in the next lectures. So here we've seen how we can calculate the concentration profile in a spherical particle subject to internal resistance to mass transport.